In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Expo push notifications in under five minutes. By the end of this video, you'll know how to send push notifications to all of your users at once, and also how to send push notifications to individuals or segmented groups. We're going to be using the native notify.com push notification service. The reason is, as far as I know, native notify.com is the only push notification service on the market that works in Expo managed work workflow. So you do not have to eject out of Expo to use Native Notify. And Native Notify works with the most up-to-date version of Expo, which is currently at version 49. Last I heard, companies like OneSignal does not work with version 49. OneSignal will only work with Expo version 44 or earlier as of the making of this video, as far as I know. So you'll want to use nativenotify.com. Click this sign up free button. It's free to sign up. There's no credit card required. It should take you to a page like this. Click this create an app button. Click react native expo. You can name it whatever you want. I'll name this my first app. This first step here, the Expo setup guide, is for people who are using React Native without Expo. So if you're just using React Native, you can still use Native Notify. You would just need to follow the instructions found at this link to install the Expo modules into your React Native project. But if you're already using Expo, you can skip this part and go straight to step one. Step one is to install these packages. Just copy these, come to your Expo project, open up a terminal, paste them there, click return. Step two is to import the register in and push token function from native notify. Open up your app.js file. At the top of the screen, import the register in and push token function. This next part says make sure your app .js component is a hook function. If you created an Expo app recently, it should already be a hook function. It should look like Expo default function app. If you're unsure what hooks are, you can click this link right here. If you are not using a hook function, you can still use native notify. You'll just want to come down here and click this link where it says click here to learn how to use native notify in an app.js class component. So if you're using a class component, you can still use native notify. You'll just want to click this link here and watch this video to learn how to use native notify in a class component. But if you're already using a hook function, you can just go ahead and go to step four, copy this register in and push token function, come to the top of your app function, paste it right there. Congratulations, you already have push notifications set up in your app. Now let's open Open up an Android emulator to test out push notifications. I have found the best version to use, by the way, is Pixel 3a API 32. So if you've opened up the device manager in Android Studio, click create a device. This one here that says Pixel 3a, this seems to work really well with Expo specifically. Sometimes the other versions are a bit buggy when using Expo. So if you click that, click next, specifically pick API 32, this one right here, and click next to create that. I've already created one, so I'm just going to click this play button to open up the emulator. This is an app I already have open, so I'm going to close that real fast. In my terminal, I'll say npx expo start, and I'll type the letter A to open it up on Android. And you'll know that it worked properly if you see this. You can now send a push notification. You successfully registered a native notify push token. If you see that in your terminal, you know you're ready to send a push notification. Something to note here is you can ignore this warning here that says calling get expo push token async without specifying a project ID is deprecated and will no longer be supported in SDK 49 plus. All this means is you haven't yet said EAS build and I'll open up a new terminal to show you what I'm talking about. So if you're watching this video in the future when they're at SDK 50 or above or something like that. Before push notifications can work, you'll need to say EAS build and select whichever platform you want. I'll just say Android and say yes to everything. Once you've done that, you'll notice an EAS.json file is created for you. And also an app.json file has been created for you. And you'll notice within this app.json file, there is now a project ID. And so now this warning will go away. I wanted to go ahead and show you 
you that because this will be important in the future. If you're using Expo version 50 or above, push notifications won't work until you do this. You need an app.json file with a project ID. And now let me just click refresh. And now you can see the warning went away and you just see you can now send a push notification in your console log. So that's how to deal with that warning. If you're using version 49 or below, you don't have to worry about it right now. But if you're using version 50 or above, you will need to say EAS build first before push notifications will work. Now we can come back to native notify.com to test out our push notifications. One thing before we move on is if you do not want to use an Android emulator to test out push notifications, you can click this link here. You can download the app called Expo Go directly on your phone, on your iPhone or your Android phone. And you can still say NPX Expo Start and open it up on your phone instead. And the way you do that is back in your terminal, whenever we said NPX Expo Start to begin with, you'll notice there's this barcode here. If you download the Expo Go app, you'll be able to scan this code here to open up the app on Android or iOS and push notifications will work there as well. So let's test out for step seven, sending a push notification. I'll say this is my first notification. This is my first message. Click send push notification. And it said your push notification was successfully sent. Let's go back and see if it was. And it looks like it was. It says this is my first notification. This is my first message. Congratulations, you can now send push notifications to all of your users. Once you've successfully sent a push notification, you'll be taken to your send push notification page. So from now on, your new app will show up on your dashboard, my first app right here. If you click on that, you can now just go to the send page up here anytime you want to send a new push notification. And if you happen to want to send a push notification using an API instead of this portal right here, you can just come down here and click this send API, which is optional. You can send your push notifications directly from this portal. But if you have your own dashboard on another website or something like that, you can use this API to send a push notification to. This is the post URL and this is the post body. You'll notice your app ID and your app token have already been put in there for you. You'll just need to put in a title, a body message, a date, and you can optionally put push data or a big picture URL. These again are optional. You don't have to put these last two in the API. And while we're talking about this, just a brief overview. If you come up here to send your push notifications, you can click this advanced setting optional option. If you're using Android for your Android push notifications, you can send pictures with your push notifications. And I'll just show you real quick how that works. I'll say funny horse picture, go to images. This one looks pretty funny. Um, I'll say open image in new tab. You'll need to do this to make sure it has a dot JPG or something like that at the end or the link won't work. So I'll copy that. I'll place that there and I'll say picture notification test. I'll go ahead and send that see what happens. All right. And if I come here, oh, I apologize. So this won't work on the Expo Go app directly. For this to work, I forgot to mention it needs to be in production mode. So it needs to be an actual app on the Google Play Store. But once you have it on the Google Play Store and you send a push notification, what it will look like is if you pull down the notification, there will be a picture. The picture that you sent with it will appear. But again, it won't work on Expo Go. So you'll need to be in production for the pictures to work. You can also optionally send data objects with your push notifications. You can click this see how data objects work to learn how to send data objects with your push notifications. This is really valuable if say when you click on a push notification, you want to be taken to a specific page in your app, you could send a data object such as a screen name, something like that, and say the screen name here so that when the app is open, opened in your use effect, you could get the push data object and automatically redirect the user to whatever page you want. Before I move on to show you how to send push notifications to individuals, I just wanted to go over how to set up production mode. You can come back down here to this book icon right here. This is where your documentation is. If you come back to your app, whenever you type EAS build, this is how you build a production app. If you're building an iOS app, you can just follow the instructions 
instructions and your app will already be ready for production, there's no additional steps you need to take as long as you follow the instructions that Expo gives you in the terminal and make sure to click yes to everything related to push notifications and then everything will just work. But with Android, you do have to click this extra step, this Android icon right here. You'll need to create a Firebase project and get the Firebase server key. It's really simple to follow these instructions. There's a video right here that shows you how to do it. Once you've created a project, you need to click this gear icon up here, click project settings, go to cloud messaging. You'll need to go down to cloud messaging API legacy. If this is not showing here, you'll need to click these this icon right here, click manage API in Google Cloud. You'll need to click this enable button if you haven't already. And then this server key will show up. This is the server key you need to copy and come down here, paste there, click save FCM server key. And now you're ready for Android production. Something to note here is after you have saved an FCM server key, your Expo Go push notifications will not work anymore. You'll have to create an APK file and install it on an actual device, an actual phone or tablet, or publish your Android app to the Google Play Store in order to test out your push notifications. At that point, you'll be able to send pictures with your push notifications too. If you would like to continue testing in Expo Go, you can just delete this server key, click save, and it will start working in Expo Go again. So whenever you're ready for production, just come here, paste in your server key there, click save. You can also click this gear icon down here and you can save your FCM token there. Coming back to the documentation, another thing I want to point out is cloud messaging API legacy is being discontinued next year in 2024. So pretty soon, nativenotify.com is going to be updating their system. It will be using the Firebase Cloud Messaging API v1 instead. And I'll be making a video about that once that happens. It should be within a month. So you'll want to click subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when that happens. But if you start using Native Notify and you haven't upgraded to Firebase Cloud Messaging API v1, you'll want to just periodically come back to your document and click on Android to see if this has been updated, or you can go to settings to see if this has been updated. Whenever the Firebase Cloud Messaging API is live, the things you'll need is in your general section in your Firebase app, you'll need your project ID, which can be found right here. And you'll need something from your console.cloud.google.com account called an auth token. I recently made a video about how this whole thing works. It should appear on the screen. You can watch that video to get a brief overview of how it all works. But for now, you can just use the legacy key. This will still work until June of 2024. Now that you know how to send push notifications to all your users at once, I just briefly wanted to go over how to send push notifications to individuals. If you click this Indie Push tab in your documentation, it shows you how to send push notifications to individuals. I'm going to make another video on this soon just to give an update, but it's really simple and you can follow the instructions to learn how to send push notifications to individuals. If you're interested in sending push notifications to groups, you can click this icon over here that looks like groups of people. You can create what are called topic groups, and then you can learn how to send push notifications to people who are specifically subscribed to that specific topic group. This video walks you through how to send push notifications to topic groups. Another cool thing that Native Notify has is a notification inbox. You can think of this like an email inbox, but for notifications, whenever you send a push notification, it will automatically go to this notification inbox. And this video shows you how to set up a notification inbox within your app. You can click on this mail icon over here to see these are the notifications that will show up in your notification inbox. And if there's any notification you send that you do not want to show up in your notification inbox, you can click delete this notification. And now it will not show up in your notification inbox box. Now only this one will. You can also have an indie notification inbox. So that first notification inbox 
inbox will collect all the push notifications sent to everyone. An indie notification inbox will collect all the push notifications sent to everyone, and it will collect the push notifications sent to each individual. So say one of your individual subscribers, users, is sent lots of individual push notifications. All those individual push notifications would only show up in their push notification inbox. And there's even an API in the Indie push notification inbox that lets your users delete their notifications. So they have more control over their notification experience within their push notification inbox. You can also set up basic analytics in your app to see the number of unique users and total views on each of your app screens. You can see your analytics here. If you click this analytics icon, after you set up analytics, your reports will show up here. The last thing I'll show is if you want to schedule a push notification to be sent sometime in the future, you can do that by clicking this calendar. And this is how you can schedule a push notification to be sent to all of your users at once in the future. And that is how to set up Expo push notifications using native notify.com. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Like the video if you'd like to see more content like this. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when more videos come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.